I'm excited to be here and to talk to you about the Inca di Cerazio project. That is a project going on at uh, Roma 3 University. And to talk to you about uh, TensorFlow helped us build a model that is able to transcribe ancient manuscripts in the Vatican Secret Archive. So, some presence, some introduction first. This is our team. On the right, you can see uh, paleographers and archivists, and on the left there's us, the data science team. And uh, that's why I think the name we chose in Codice Razio reflects us very well, uh, because it's a, a wordplay between the Italian and the Latin meaning of the word codice. Now, in Latin, in Codice Razio would mean a knowledge through manuscripts, but the word codice in Italian also means software code, so it's also knowledge through software, which is exactly what we're planning to do. And so you might ask yourselves, uh, what brings paleographers and archivists and data scientists together? Well, they have one problem in common. They both want to discover knowledge from big data. We are used to think of big data as something that happens in the web, but actually historical archives are endless source of historical information, of important information, of cultural information. And just to give you a scale of how large this this information can be. Uh, let's just compare for a second the sides of the Vatican Secret Archive to the height of Mount Everest. Now, if you were to take each shelving of a Vatican Secret Archive and stack it one on top of the other, you would get to 85 kilometers tall. That is about 10 times the size of Mount Everest. And the content spans the centuries and the, co the, and the continents. For example, there you have examples of letters coming from China, from Europe, from Africa, and of course, from the Americas. <coughs> so what is our goal? Our goal is to build tools and technology that enable historians, archivists, and scholars of the humanity in general to perform large-scale analysis on, this, on historical archives. Because right now, the process, let me tell you, is entirely manual. You still have to go there, consult the documents manually, and be able to read that very challenging handwriting. And then, if you find information then you, that maybe links to another collection, then you have to do it all by yourself. Uh, but first, uh, we have to face the very first challenge, that is, uh, when you are dealing with web content, for example, if you want to extract data from the internet, well, that's already text. And when we said we are dealing with uh, historical documents, that's often scans. And oh, traditional OCR is fine for printed text, but then you get to this. This is uh, medieval and handwriting. It's Latin, a language nobody uses anymore. It's a handwriting nobody uh, is able to write or read anymore, for that matter. It's heavily abbreviated, and still you want to get text out of it. So you might want to train a machine learning model, of course you want. Uh, but then we, go, we come to the second challenge, and that is scalability in the dataset collection process. Now, uh, the graph you see there is on a logarithmic scale, and uh, it might show you something that you already know, that it's known as the zip flow, that tells you that uh, most, uh, there is very few words occurring at uh, humongous uh, times, and then the most of the words, they do not occur that often. What does that mean for us? That if we want to collect uh, data for, for example, at word level, at vocabulary level, this means that we have to uh, annotate uh, thousands of lines of text, which means thousands of uh, hundreds of pages. Okay, and there so similar uh, systems do exist, they are state-of-the-art systems, but uh, most of the paleographers, even when they know of these tools, get discouraged in using them. Uh, because they say, well, it's not, it's not cost effective for me because it can take up to months or even years of work on these documents just to get uh, a transcription system that they will maybe use once or twice, I don't know. <coughs> Whereas they would like to do it faster. So we ask ourselves, how can we scale on this task? And so we decided to go by easier steps, simpler steps. Uh, the very first things that we did was to collect data for single characters. And this enabled us to not to involve paleographers, but people with very less experience. We built a custom crowdsourcing platform uh, that, was, that worked much, pretty much like CAPTCHA solving. It, what you see there is an actual screen from the platform. So they were, uh, the workers were presented with an image and with a target, and they had to match 
the target with the, and select the areas inside of the image. And in this way, we were able to involve uh, more than 500 uh, high school students, and in about two weeks' work, we made more than 40,000 annotations. So now we had the data. We wanted to build a model. Uh, when, we, when I started working at the project, um, I was pretty much a beginner in machine learning. And so uh, TensorFlow uh, helped me uh, put in practice what I was studying in theory. And so it was a great help like, uh, that I could uh, rely on tutorials and on the community and where everything else failed, even the source code. Um, so uh, we started experimenting and, uh, experimenting and we decided to start small first. We didn't want to overkill, we wanted to, the model to fit exactly our data. So we started more and proceeded incrementally. And in this phase, in a constant cycle of tuning hyperparameters and model tuning, choosing the best optimizer, the best initializers, uh, the number of layers and the type of the layers, and then evaluating and training again. Uh, then we used Keras. It was good for us because it allowed us to keep the code small and readable. And then this is what we settled for. Uh, it might look like trivial, uh, but it uh, allowed us to, uh, <coughs> to get up to 94% average accuracy on our, uh, on our test characters. So where does this fit in the whole scheme of the transcription system? Uh, it's there in the middle, and it's actually so far the only neural park, but we're planning to expand, and you will see how later, we will see how later. And so we have the input image. So far, we're, we're relying on an over-segmentation that it's old school. It's a bit old school, but it allows us to feed the single characters or combinations of, of characters inside of the classifier, which then produces uh, different transcription who are ranked uh, according to a latent language model, which we also build from publicly available sources. <clears throat> How good do we get? Uh, we get about 65% exact transcription. And we can get up to 80% if we consider minor spelling errors or if the segmentation is perfect. If we had perfect segmentation, we could get up to 80%. We will see that this can be more challenging. Okay, so uh, what's, what are our plans for the future? Uh, we're very excited about the integration of TensorFlow and Keras because I described you the process as being fully Keras. What we actually uh, found out was that sometimes uh, some features were lagging behind and sometimes we wanted to uh, get to one part of the, of the features or, one, or from Keras or from TensorFlow. And so we found ourselves doing lots of, I don't know if that's your experience as well, but we found ourselves doing lots of back and forth between TensorFlow and Keras. And now we get the best of the two worlds, so we're very excited about that. Uh, and so, how do we plan to expand our machine learning system? First thing first, uh, we are trying uh, UNETs for semantic segmentation. These are the same nets that achieved very good results on medical imaging. And we're planning to use them to get rid of this tricky computer vision old school uh, segmentation. And that would also achieve the result uh, of having classification together, because this is semantic segmentation we're talking of. These are some uh, preliminary uh, examples that were particularly well. Of course, there is work still we have to do. And then, of course, since there could still be ambiguity, we could do error correction and then transcription. But I think this would be in itself a significant improvement. And another thing we're experimenting with is enlarging our data set because we don't want to stick to characters. We want to evolve. We want to move to word level and even sentence level uh, annotated characters, but still our focus is scalability in the dataset collection, so we want to involve paleographers as little as possible. Um, so, for example, this is uh, our generated inputs from uh, GAN, but we're also planning on using, uh, for example, a variational autoencoder so that we can evolve our dataset with little human interaction, the, like the less we can. <clears throat> And in the end, this would bring us to actually use sequence model that could take full advantage of uh, the sentence level context, for example, or and could even be able to solve things that we couldn't be able to solve for uh, with single, uh, let's say, uh, with single character classification, for example, abbreviation. In this kind of text, many words occur abbreviated, for example. Uh, just like you would text, in some texts you would say me too and use two, the number, or for you. 
And that's the same with this kind of manuscript. So, and that's one, one, of the, one of the application you could have. Also, we are planning to use sequence models to get to a neural language model, because so far we only have experimented with statistics. And one last thing before I let you, before I let you go. Um, I mentioned the people in the team, but it's, there is so many people I would like to thank that were not in that slides. And uh, first of all, Simone, who should have been here, and, but he couldn't make it, and he was my machine learning uh, uh, Jedi master. <laughs> and then uh, Pi School of AI and Sebastian Bratiers and Lukas Kaiser for, for their amazing mentoring. And Marika Shone, who is the high school teacher that actually allowed us to involve those students that work for the platform. And of course, all of the graduate and undergraduate students that worked with us and helped us achieve what we have, what we have achieved and what we plan to achieve in the future. And of course, thank you for your attention. <laughs>